Planet Earth, it's the only home we've ever known. But we can't stay here forever. Because whether it's due to climate change, killer asteroids, or some other horrifying disaster, Earth is going to die. Eventually. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Good. Let's see. Is that... Cool. Have thank you. Problem. All right, thank you. We're at NASA's Ames Research Center, which is home to both NASA research facilities as well as a bunch of private space companies. It's kind of like the epicenter of the new commercial space industry, as well as a throwback to the early days of NASA's work. This unassuming office is home to Moon Express, a startup that hopes to be the first private company to land on and mine the moon. I believe that the first trillionaires will actually be generated by investments in space resources. Moon Express CEO Bob Richards thinks space mining could dwarf any industry on Earth. The long-term vision of Moon Express is to open up the economic resources of the moon to unlock its mysteries and provide its benefits back to planet Earth and to our expanding civilization in space. That's the big vision. But the key from a business perspective is how do you get there? How do you bridge to that huge vision? The ability for a small team of engineers like Moon Express to be able to take on what only superpowers have been able to do in the past is because of exponential technology. We're going from the mainframe era of space, which was large government-centric, to the PC era. So you don't have to have massive amounts of hardware anymore. You can dematerialize that into software. We don't have to kill the Earth in order to live. We can go to the moon where there's no biosphere, there's no life, but there's resources there. We're not going to be displacing any tall blue people that we know about. And it's a realm of opportunity for us to work together as a species to conquer a new frontier without conquering each other. The wonderful random circumstance we have as a species that we live on a world that has another world really close. And it's so cl relatively close, it's not inconsistent to think of the journey to the moon today as like the journey to the Americas of only a few hundred years ago. It was a big challenge. People made a decision to really try to open up a new world. We're doing the same thing with the moon. Why? Because everything that we mine on Earth and need as, in as an industrial civilization is available on the moon. Why? Because the moon and the Earth evolved together. Both were bombarded by asteroids for billions of years in their early history. In the case of the Earth, very large world, very molten. And the asteroids are kind of splashing and, and a lot of the heavy metals we have that we have to dig for are, are buried very deep in the Earth because they kind of sunk. The moon is a little different. It cooled much faster. So it's kind of a hard rock that these asteroids were hitting. And in many cases, not just vaporizing, but shattering. And imagine the trillions of dollars of wealth that's accumulated in the moon over those billions of years. It's there. Every average heavy metal asteroid that's out there contains about a trillion dollars worth of precious metals. They've been accumulating on the moon for a long, long time. So that's where we're going. We think the pay dirt for these trillions of dollars worth of asteroidal resources are actually on the moon. And our investors believe so too. And so Moon Express has a plan to start delivering cargo, scientific and commercial instruments to the surface of the moon with robots, and have people pay for that. And as we learn how to land on the moon and we take advantages of those missions to explore the moon and find out where the ground truth is of the resources we know are there, then we'll be able to plan further and explore, prospect, and eventually bring something back from the moon. Five, four, three, two, one. Main engine ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket with LRO Elfrost. America's first step of a lasting return to the moon. In 2009, NASA launched the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. One of its primary objectives was to find evidence of water on the moon's poles, which it did. The discovery is vital to Moon Express's plan. The economics of the moon is made possible through water on the moon. Think of water as the oil of the solar system. Its constituents, hydrogen and oxygen, are actually rocket fuel. And only water gives you the opportunity 
to create the fuel necessary to bring those resources off the lunar surface. So the first thing that Moon Express will be doing is actually learning how to mine and process the water on the Moon. We're looking for our first gusher. And we know that that's likely going to come from the south pole of the Moon, where most of the water's been accumulating in ISIS. And that's in the matter of the next five to ten years. We're not talking decades out. So our goal is, uh, is in 2020, we'll bring something back you can hold in your hand, something between two to six kilograms of stuff could be worth upwards of a billion dollars. And then the game is on. And this will be rehearsal for Mars. So the water on the moon creates the fuel that changes the economics, not just of the moon, but the entire solar system. It's just a little component of a very large tapestry of the world of we humans becoming a multi-world species. And this is absolutely essential for our ultimate survival.